Greetings world. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Humane slaughter of horses in Canada and federally registered slaughter establishments must comply with the Meat Inspection Act and the Meat Inspection Regulations set forth by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Some of the provisions contained in the regulations include requirements for properly unloading, holding and moving of animals in slaughter facilities, requirements for segregating and handling sick or injured animals, and requirements for the humane slaughter of food animals. But nowhere does it state how easy it is to sell a horse for human consumption. There are no proof of ownership or health records of these horses needed, and this has to be changed. Because recently a woman says her horses were sent to the slaughterhouse by a man who had no right to sell her animals, and one of her horses was being treated with a potentially carcinogenic drug. She had been bordering her horses on a farm for more than four years until the death of the owner of the property resulted in the untimely deaths of the two horses. The owner of the horses was informed she would need to relocate her horses as the bank was foreclosing on the property. So sent her daughter to retrieve the animals but she discovered the animals had been sold to a horse slaughtering plant. The accused sold the horses to Bouvry experts for $800. RCMP have charged the property owner's ex-husband with theft of cattle, trafficking stolen property and uttering forged documents. According to the accused he had no intention of stealing the animals and he sold the horses to the slaughtering plant following a phone conversation between his son and the woman. The executor of the estate also agreed with selling the horses but no direction was given on how or where to sell the animals. The accused admits that he didn't closely read the livestock manifest or equine information document before signing the papers that stated he was lawful owner of the animals. The woman claims she never said to sell the horses. She had already secured another location for the horses. The animals were slaughtered for human consumption and her gelding horse had been treated with phenylbutazone, an anti-inflammatory drug commonly known as bute, that is listed as a potentially carcinogenic drug. Her case is an unfortunate example of how easy it is to sell a horse for human consumption. There needs to be some sort of proof of ownership, and there needs to be health records of the horses. The woman is also calling for changes to the laws governing equine slaughter for human consumption in Canada, and has created a petition calling on Prime Minister Trudeau and the Canada Food Inspection Agency to improve the laws that govern the sale and slaughter of horses for human consumption. The link to the petition is in the description below. Canada's horse slaughter industry was also under fire since a listeriosis outbreak that killed 23 people in 2008, and an E. coli contamination in 2012 that led to the largest meat recall in Canadian history. Slaughtering between 70,000 and 115,000 horses every year. Most of those horses are contaminated with veterinary drugs, many of which are banned by Health Canada for human consumption. One of the most common of those drugs is phenylbutazone, an anti-inflammatory and painkiller used so often it's referred to as horse aspirin, but in humans it can cause potentially fatal disorders of the blood and immune system. On its website, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency says it has zero tolerance for those drugs getting into the food supply, but it happens. That wasn't supposed to happen after the Canadian Food Inspection Agency required all horses presented for slaughter to have an equine information document. The EID contains information meant to make a horse's drug history more traceable. The Canadian Horse Defence Coalition says that system has been a failure because some documents had been doctored, ones that had omissions, horses that didn't match the description on the e -ist. 
They are going to provide the paperwork so that they can do their business and fill it out in the way that it needs to be filled out so that it meets the criteria. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's filled out according to the truth. The government sets the rules out that are necessary for us to follow. If somebody falsifies a paper or does something wrong, that's for them to investigate and figure out. The regulations covering horse meat are weak and riddled with contradictions. Despite the fact that CFI claims it has zero tolerance for banned veterinary drugs, it allows horses to be slaughtered for meat as long as they are accompanied by an EID declaring the horse has been drug-free for six months and no proof is required. We're allowing meat to go into the food chain that we don't have any control over. We have those guidelines in our regulation that explicitly state, if there are any drugs that are administered at any time and in an animal's lifetime, that meat is no longer fit for human consumption. If our regulations state that it's a lifetime ban, why do we even have a six-month document? I never saw or heard of the CFI doing drug screening. The horses were coming in many times offloaded into the hold pen outside the plant, and 15 minutes later they are being killed. They see that animal for seconds. So do they get everything done they are supposed to do. The few inspectors in slaughterhouses are stretched much too thin and can't realistically be expected to inspect every animal as required by law, but they should be doing this since these harmful substances can harm us. The CFI knows the EID system isn't sufficient to track horses' veterinary history and ensure the meat is safe, but the agency continues to look the other way. We have to put an end to this and ensure that this system does not fail us. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.